one of the most enduring faces of world literature. But a figure of fierce debate. My name's Macbeth. Some doubt that a middle-class tax collector from a provincial English town would be able to write so intimately about war, the court, and distant lands. Now, one Russian academic has thrown her hat into the ring. This new book claims the bard was not one person, but two. Shakespeare's plays and sonnets are easily settled by this answer that there were two persons, one a great thinker and one and the other a great poet. Litvinova says the works were a partnership between philosopher and statesman Sir Francis Bacon and poet-scholar Roger Manners, fifth Earl of Rutland. According to Litvinova, these men had all the right ingredients of real writers. To be or not to be, that is the question. They hung out with prominent figures of the day. Manners headed a military campaign and led a mission to Denmark, a setting, of course, for Hamlet. I have of late, but wherefore I know not, lost all my mirth, forgone all custom of excise. What piece of work is a man? How noble in reason, how infinite in faculty, how like a god in disposition. For the many thousands that have treaded the boards since the 16th century, the new revelations are unlikely to detract from the beauty of the words, but would a rose by any other name still smell as sweet. For one of Britain's leading theatre directors, the Bard's appeal lies in the fact that he wasn't an aristocrat, but an ordinary subject. Nobody's ever come forward with a theory that Shakespeare's plays were written by some milkmaid. No, it was always the Earl of Oxford, Sir Francis Bacon. I think it's very clear Shakespeare did read his, write, his, write his plays. Well, the debate continues. Among other candidates, the man who launched a thousand ships, Christopher Marlowe, and Earl of Oxford, Edward de Vere. But for the time being, to the pleasure or horror of school children around the world, Shakespeare remains Shakespeare. Neve Barker, Russia Today, Moscow.